Hi, I'm Caroline Alliston, a professional engineer, STEM educator and DTS consultant. This is what we're going to make today. It's a magnetic compass. When you magnetise the needle, it floats round until the needle points north-south. You can make it turn by putting magnetic materials near it, like this pair of scissors. This is similar to a compass that you'd use for navigation. You could see them both lined up north-south. This is what you'll need. A bowl or pot. I've got some examples here. This is china. This is plastic. And this is a ricotta pot. You need a plastic milk bottle lid. A wire paper clip. And two needles. And you'll need paper, pencil, blue tack, a mark pen, scissors, a dry cloth, some water, and a ruler. And finally, you'll need a magnet. Uh, here are some magnets you could use a bar magnet, a ring magnet, oids, or a fridge magnet. I tried to find the strongest fridge magnet I could. I put them all off the fridge and this was the most difficult to pull off, so I'll use this one. Step one is to prepare the bottle lid. Place the bottle lid open end down on the blue tack. Press straight down with the pencil to make a hole in the middle. Take it off the blue tack. Open up the hole with the pencil until it's about four millimeters diameter. Cut two narrow V slots in opposite sides of the lid. Step two is to magnetise the needle. Hold a needle by the eye end so that you don't spike yourself and stroke it 20 times with one pole of a magnet. If you're using a bar magnet, use one of the ends. If you have an oids, use one of the scratched sides. If you're using a fridge magnet, just use the back. You have to lift the magnet away from the needle on the return stroke like this. Step three is to check and fit the needle. Check the needle is magnetised by seeing if it can lift the second needle. If not, then you could try magnetising it again or try a different needle or magnet. Press the magnetised needle into the slots in the bottle lid. Step four is to prepare the paper clip. Bend the long leg of the paper clip up vertically. Roll a piece of blue tack and squash it along the bottom of the paper clip. Use the blue tack to attach the paper clip to the bottom of the bowl with the long legs sticking up in the middle of the bowl. Step five is to add water and fit the bottle lid. Pour water into the bowl until it comes about halfway up the leg of the paper clip. Carefully place the hole in the bottle lid over the long leg of the paper clip. Step six is to check which way the compass is magnetized. Place the compass away from any metal objects and watch the needle swing round to point north-south. Once it has settled, work out which end is pointing south. This should be the direction of the sun at midday. 
This end is south. Take the bottle lid off the paper clip and put it on the cloth to dry. Step 7 is to mark up the paper with the points of the compass. Take the paper and measure the short side. Draw a line at this distance from the short side to make a square. Mark halfway along each side of the square and join the marks to make a cross. Draw another cross from corner to corner. Then mark on the points of the compass. This is north, south, east, west, northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. Step 8 is to mark up the compass dial. Place the bottle lid on the paper with the hole in the middle of the cross and the correct end of the needle pointing south. Mark the eight points of the compass on the rim and then write on the lid N for north, S for south, E for east and W for west. Step 9 is to place the compass dial back over the paper clip and try out the compass. You can find out which objects are made of magnetic materials by putting them near the needle and seeing if it moves. You could ask someone to set you up a treasure hunt by putting a compass in the middle of the room or in the garden and hiding treasure then challenge you to find it using the compass bearing. Now my son, who is a physics student, is going to tell you about the science behind the project. A magnet can be used to attract magnetic materials. It also has a magnetic field around it. This picture shows a bar magnet with two poles, north and south, making it a dipolar magnet. Around the magnet are iron filings showing the magnetic field lines associated with it. So the magnet doesn't actually need to touch the magnetic materials to interact with them. Just like gravity, it can act at a distance. As we can see, these magnets attract each other at a distance. If you touch a magnetic material with a magnet, it will temporarily become one itself. I can hang a row of pennies off this magnet. Each one becomes a magnet which attracts the next, and so on. Then, if I take the magnet away, the pennies stop being magnets and fall off. Some magnetic materials can retain their magnetism, becoming permanent magnets. This is why you're able to turn the needle itself into a magnet. When you stroke the needle many times in the same direction with one pole of the permanent magnet, you pulled particular atoms in the material in that direction. This effectively created lots of mini-magnets all running the same way in the needle. The Earth also has a magnetic field. Movement of molten iron, a magnetic material, in its fluid outer core creates this. This is almost in line with the geographic north and south, although the magnetic poles do move slightly over time. If you create a magnet and allow it to turn freely, then one end will be attracted to the magnetic north pole and the other to the magnetic south pole. Understanding this principle allowed people to make long journeys and to navigate all the way around the world using compasses. This project is taken from the TTS Key Stage 2 STEM activity cards. Here are some more examples of projects taken from these cards. Coin battery. Clock made out of hammer beads. Seesaw, cork gymnasts, periscope, CD racer, balloon hovercraft. and Teddy Zipwire.